In this episode, we're looking at the life of the founder of Afrobeat, Fela Anikola Pokuti. Who was he? Fela Kuti was a man ahead of his time, the founder of one of the greatest musical genres ever created. Fela Kuti was a Nigerian musician, composer, and political activist who used his platform to speak up against corruption and injustice in the world. Fela was a highly influential and an important figure in the world of music. His songs and legacy continues to be studied and analyzed by scholars and researchers around the world. Like one of the latest songs I'm singing now, I said, teacher, don't teach me nonsense. Right. Now I was trying to make this my people see, because in Africa people respect teachers. You know, the teachers because they teach English and they teach their pupils, you know. Respect teachers and rare pastors, you know, in Africa. I now wove this song into letting the people see that white men have taught us everything we know. But I made people see also that one important thing they taught us was politics. Because I wove in, in the song to the elections in Nigeria, the, because it was the first. Now, I mentioned democracy. Now, in English, an Englishman will say, Demo democracy. But if the African man wants to say it in Brooklyn, he will say, democracy. See now. I never thought of the word. I said, demo, Chris, crazy. That's, now I saw craziness. I said, I could not see my, let my people see that democracy really is not that word, that it's really madness, you know? So I said, now, now I started to sing. I said, I start to think of this word, democracy. Democracy, crazy demo. Demonstration of craze. Crazy demonstration. Democracy. Crazy demo. Demonstration of craze. He was such a force to be reckoned with that even several universities and organizations have continued to speak of his influence on music, including his use of music as a platform for political and social activism. A few of these universities are the African Studies Center at UCLA, which focuses on the study of Africa and African diasporans. The Department of Music at Yale University. The School of Music at the University of Ghana, which has a focus on the study of African music and its role in cultural and social life. And lastly, the Center for African Studies at the University of Wisconsin, all of which have studied Fela and his unique style of music. Now Fela's music was also used in a number of Western musical theater performances over the years. One well-known example is the musical show of Fela, which is a Broadway musical show that tells the story of the life of Fela and his music. Zombie no good think unless you tell him to think. Zombie. The La, the musical, was first performed on Broadway in 2009 and has been performed in various cities around the world, including London, Paris, and Amsterdam. The musical act features Fela's music and explores the theme of political activism and social justice that were central to his work. Fela's music continues to be a source of inspiration and influence in the world. But despite the success of his musical achievements, Fela personally faced numerous challenges and setbacks throughout his life. He was arrested, beaten by the Nigerian government for his activism, and his effort to bring about change often met with resistance. But he remained undaunted, using his music and his message to inspire and empower people of Nigeria and beyond. But I say I didn't die, because my name is Anikulakbo. I have death in my pouch. I can't die. They can't kill me. One, two, three, four. 
This is a story of a man who dared to dream. A man who challenged the status quo and confronted injustice dead on. A man who would become the legend that inspired a generation. This is the rise of the founder of Afrobeats. Now welcome to Corporate Junkie, the trusted media source. If you are new to this channel, please take the time to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Also, do not forget to like, share and leave a comment below the description of this video. Felakuti was born on October 15, 1938 in Abiokuta, Nigeria. His father, Rev. Israel Oludotun Ransom Kuti, was a minister in the Church of Nigeria a school principal and a political activist who fought for Nigerian independence from the British colonial rule. The last mother, Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, was also a political activist and was involved in the struggle for women's rights in Nigeria. The last parents were both influential in shaping his love of music and his commitment to social and political activism. His father was also a talented musician who played the piano and sang. He exposed Fela to various musical styles, including traditional African and Western classical music, such as jazz and funk. At a young age, Fela learned to play the saxophone and piano. His mother was also a vocal advocate for social justice and human rights, and inspired young Fela to speak up against injustice and oppression. Fela inherited his mother's passion for social justice and became very involved in activism as he grew older. Young Fela attended primary school in Abiokuta as well as several secondary schools, including Abiokuta Grammar School and Government College in Ibadan, one of Nigeria's most prestigious secondary schools at the time. After completing his secondary education, Fela moved to London to study medicine at the University of London School of Medicine in 1958. Yes, you heard me right. Before Fela would ever be known as the founder of Afrobeat or the musical genius of his time, he wanted to become a doctor which was something his mother, who had a profound impact on his life, inspired him to pursue. But Fela struggled in school, did not excel academically, and would later choose a different path. Now, despite his ambition to become a medical doctor, Fela ultimately chose to travel in his father's footsteps and pursue a career in music at Trinity College of Music in London. Now, while in London, he formed a band called the Cola Labitos in the 1960s, and began playing a style of music that blended elements of traditional African music with Western styles such as jazz and funk. He was inspired by the likes of James Brown and the free jazz of Ornette Coleman and John Coltrane. Fela and his band Kola Labitos played in various countries in West Africa, including Ghana and Senegal, as they toured around the world. The early music style that Fela developed with Kola Labitos is often referred to as high-life jazz. They also recorded several albums during this time, including Fela's London Scene and Fela Ransom Kuti and African 70 with Ginger Baker Live. African 70 would later become the second and most popular band that Fela would form in the early 1970s. Now this band would later usher in the creation of Afro Beats, his greatest musical legacy to date. But more on that later. Fela produced a number of albums, and the success of his albums helped establish Fela as a musical genius and paved the way for his future in music. During his time in London, Fela became interested in political and social issues and began incorporating these themes into his music. He would later be influenced by the Black Power movement 
and the civil rights movement in the United States and use his music as a platform to speak up against injustice and oppression. Upon returning to Nigeria, his political consciousness became a defining feature of his musical career. Afela was known to use his music to criticize the Nigerian military government, whose dictatorial practices at the time negatively impacted its citizens. He was arrested and imprisoned several times, beaten and faced harassment and intimidation from the Nigerian government throughout his career. It is even said that some of the health problems which he developed later on in his career resulted from the countless torture and abuse by the Nigerian authorities. In 1970, Velakuti established the Kalakuta Republic, which was a self-declared independent state located within the city of Lagos, Nigeria. The Kalakuta Republic was a commune that served as a home for Fela and his band members, as well as for other artists, political activists, and other people who shared Fela's ideas. The Kalakuta Republic was a space where Fela and his community could live and work outside of the constraint of the tradition of Nigerian society. They were able to express themselves freely and live according to their own values and beliefs. The commune was also a center for political and social activism and it served as a symbol of resistance to the Nigerian government and the status quo. Fela used the Kalakuta Republic as a platform to criticize the Nigerian government and its leaders, and he also used it to promote his music and political messages. Fela's band rehearsed and performed at the commune, and it also served as a record label and publishing company for Fela's music. A few notable songs recorded there were Shakara, released in 1971, Lady, released in 1972, an expensive shit, released in 1975. However, the Nigerian government saw the Kalakuta Republic as a threat and a challenge to their authority, and they attempted to shut it down on multiple occasions. On February 18, 1977, the Nigerian military conducted a violent raid on the compound, which resulted in the destruction of the building, the injury and arrest of several of its inhabitants, and the death of Fela's mother. This event became known as the Kalakuta Republic Massacre, and it was a major turning point in Fela's life and career, resulting in the further radicalization of his political and musical message. After the Nigerian government's violent raid on Kalakuta Republic, Felakuta responded by continuing to speak up against the government and its actions. Before they entered my house that day, it took them about three hours. Now, if you see a thousand soldiers surrounding the house in Lagos, a thousand soldiers surrounding the house, and this really draws a lot of crowd. There were about 60,000 people watching this scene. It's like a big theater show. People standing on the highway, cars had stopped. Big, go slow, no cars couldn't move. Because I, I had already, I had electrified the fence, you know. So anytime they touched the fence, the soldiers, they had to run back. So they had to order the electrical authority to turn the, let you switch the lights off in the area. So that was when they could start to get in, you know. But that one didn't take a short time, it took them three hours, you know. So that was the advantage that one gave me, so people could really see that I was being attacked without attacking anybody. You know. In an interview with the media, Fela condemned the government's action and spoke about the human rights violation that had just occurred. He then wrote a number of hit songs that were critical of the Nigerian government and the military raid that destroyed his compound. Zombie was released in 1977 and served as one of the last most famous and enduring work. The song criticized the Nigerian military, who Fela referred to as zombies, for their blind obedience to their superiors in attacking the Kalakuta Republic. Zombie, oh zombie, zombie, oh zombie, 
zombie, oh zombie. Zombie, oh zombie. Zombie, no go go unless you tell him to go. Zombie, zombie, no go stop unless you tell him to stop. Zombie, zombie, no go turn unless you tell him to turn. Zombie, zombie, no go think unless you tell him to think. Zombie, oh zombie. Go. Zombie, zombie, no go stop unless you tell him to stop. Zombie, zombie, no go turn unless you tell him to turn. Zombie, zombie, no go think unless you tell him to think. Uh -huh. Zombie, zombie, yo, oh, zombie. Zombie, yo, oh, zombie. Uh -huh. Zombie, yo, oh, zombie. Zombie, yo, oh, zombie. Tell him to go straight. Na joro, jara, joro. No break, no jam, no sense. Na joro, jara, joro. Tell him to go kill a joro jara joro. No break, no jam, no sense. A joro jara joro. Tell him to go quench a joro jara joro. No break, no jam, no sense. A joro jara joro. Go and kill. Go and die. Go and quench. Put up all the vibes. Go and quench. Go and kill. Go and die. Put up all the vibes. Go and die. He also released Sorrow, Tears and Blood to address the brutality of the Nigerian military raid on the compound during which his mother was thrown down from a window and died. Everybody run, run, run Everybody scatter, scatter Some people lost some bread Someone nearly died Someone just died Police, they come, how me they come Confusion everywhere Seven minutes later All don't cool down, brother Police don't go away Army don't disappear Them leave sorrow, tears and blood Them regular straight man Them leave sorrow, tears and blood Them regular straight man Them regular trademark Them regular trademark That is why yeah. Everybody run, run, run yeah. Everybody scatter, scatter yeah. Someone nearly died yeah. Some people lost some bread yeah. Someone just died yeah. Police, they come, I mean, they come yeah. Confusion everywhere yeah. There has not Seven been anybody in this whole politics in Africa. Police Only two people have worked on the streets to follow Army people to where they are going. Nkrumah and my mother. Sorrow, what are you talking Lord. about? All this nonsense that you have hanging around here. They sit down in cars, man. This government, through my mother out of window. This is Kumilayo and Nicola Pukuti. Who fought our blood for this country on the street? We fear for the thing we no see. We fear for the air around us. We fear to fight for freedom. We fear to fight for liberty. We fear to fight for justice. We fear to fight for happiness. We always get reason to fear. We no one die. We no one wound. We no one quench. We no one go. I get one child. My mind for house. My body for house. I won't build a house. I don't build a house. I no one quench. I won't enjoy. I no one go. Uh. So policeman go slap your face. You no go talk. The Kalakota Republic, despite its end, remained an, an important symbol of Fela's vision and opposition to the Nigerian government and its policies. The commune and the tragedies that took place there long ago continue to be remembered and celebrated as a significant moment in Nigeria's history and in the struggle for freedom and self-determination. A couple of years later, and in 1980, Fela would release a 24-minute direct attack hit song called ITT, International Thief Thief, a bold and scattering attack on international leaders and prominent Nigerian figures, whom Fela accused of exploiting Nigeria and its resources. It is also noteworthy to point out that Fela did not just speak up against what was going on in Nigeria at the time, 
but the world. He spoke up in support of the civil rights struggles in the United States and condemned the evil against African Americans. Fela also spoke up against the system of apartheid in South Africa and advocated for the rights of black South Africans while condemning the discrimination and persecution they face under the apartheid system. In particular, he was critical of the role of Western power in supporting and enabling the apartheid regime and he used his music to address these issues. Songs like Colonial Mentality were a masterpiece used to point out the European corruption and the role of Western power in supporting corrupt regimes in Africa. Now while Fela was advocating for the freedom and elevation of his people, he struggled in his personal life. He faced a lot of financial problems. Now you would think a man who was as influential as Fela was with successful songs and album under his belt would financially be set for life. He faced challenges in getting paid for his music and in managing his own finances and often struggled to make ends meet. Many of his fans would say that he was worth millions and attribute his wealth to his impact on music which paved the way for many great artists to use his Afrobeat legacy in genres like Afrobeats and hip hop. It is also important to point out that Fela wasn't the only one speaking up against injustice and corruption in the country. There were many other activists and social justice advocates in Nigeria and around the world during this time when Fela was active. Now, some of these were Wale Shoinka, a Nigerian playwright and activist who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in Literature in 1986. He is also known for his activism on issues such as human rights, democracy, and social justice. He has been an influential figure in the world of activism and social justice in Nigeria and around the world. Desmond Tutu, a South African Anglican cleric and social justice advocate who was also an important figure in the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. He was also awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 for his effort to promote democracy, human rights and social justice in South Africa and around the world. Right, I'm, I'm, I must tell you, hey man, stop that talk, man. I'm not a bushman. Take it easy. Understand me? I'm making a show, man. The family, the show that I'm here. Oh, me. The animal fan. Oh, no, no, family. The animal fan. Felakuti's band, Kola Labitos, was primarily based in Nigeria and played at various venues and events within the country. However, the band also toured internationally and played in several countries worldwide. In the 1960s, the band played in various countries in West Africa, including Ghana and Senegal. In the 1970s, the band played in several European countries, including France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. They also played in the United States, where they toured extensively and performed at venues like New York and Los Angeles. <laughs> Now, Fela would later be conflicted by his message and the venues in which he performed. Now, because of his stance on racism and corruption, Fela wanted to move his music away from international audiences and at the pleasure of European entertainment. He would share his new conviction with a few close friends in his band and others. One of such individuals was Ibo Taylor a popular Ghanaian guitarist who was close to Fela and with whom Fela shared some of his vision for a new musical genre. We had a Ghana Black Star High Life Band, you know, sponsored by the Ghana High Commission. But at the same time, we jammed with uh, uh, the Nigerian musicians because they also loved our life. And they always come along, along and play with us, like Fela, like uh, uh, Peter King, uh, like Mike Falana. I knew Fela very well because uh, he was my friend. We were always discussing. He would say, Taylor, why don't you, you know, play our own thing? We we're always playing jazz. Jazz is for the American. And so we all started looking, you know, on our own, on our own table, you know. So he started the, uh, the Afrobeat in Nigeria and he was very successful. So he began working towards creating a new music genre that represented both Africa and the voice of his people. Now this music genre would not have Western influence like what he had come to know and produce. Now to help bring forth this new creation, Fela put together a new band called Africa 70 in the 1970s. 
Africa 70 was a large assemble that typically consisted of more than 20 musicians and dancers, and it was known for its energetic and powerful performances. Now some of the members of Africa 70 included Tony Allen, who was a drummer and was a key member on the band. He played on many of Felas' most famous recordings and is considered as one of the pioneers of Afrobeat music genre. Lekan Animachan was a saxophonist and florist who played with Africa 70. He was also a member of the band for many years and played on a number of Felas' most famous recordings. J.K. Brema was a guitarist on the band for many years and last but not least, the last of his own very song, Femi Kuti, was also a member of the Africa 70 for many years. Africa 70 was known for its powerful and energetic performances, and it played a key role in the founding and popularity of the Afrobeat genre in its home country of Nigeria. Afrobeat would become Fela's crowning achievement and musical legacy. A musical genre that would later inspire the birth of Afrobeats, a modern musical genre rooted in Afrobeats and influenced by hip-hop, pop, and electronic dance music. It was developed in Lagos, Nigeria, and later adopted by artists in Ghana, Kenya, and Cameroon. Modern Afrobeats is characterized by the heavy use of electronic music production techniques and reliance on synthesizers and other electronic instruments. Fala was at the height of his career, entertaining audiences and spreading his message of social justice through his music. But behind the scenes, something wasn't right. The artist was struggling with a health crisis that would ultimately cost him his life. Fela had been diagnosed with HIV, and his health began to deteriorate rapidly. It is not clear how Fela contracted the HIV virus, which would later develop into AIDS. Fela was a controversial and rebellious figure who lived an unconventional lifestyle and it is possible that he may have contracted the HIV virus through a high-risk sexual behavior or drug use. He was in and out of hospitals, struggling with his illness, and it became clear that his days were numbered. I married a wife before, I married one wife before, then I separated, then I married to the seven. When I divorced all 27, I'm divorced everybody, I don't want to marry anymore, man, you know, because for me, life is experience. Life is not just something you just keep following and blindly because the people are doing it. I uh, went to prison, and in prison I finally, I finally cleared the 
rough edges of my concept of my mind. Part of these rough edges was marriage. I found out that marriage is evil. It breeds jealousy, selfishness, and possessiveness. I think marriage is an institution, even in the African concept too. It's an institution, and I think coexistence between man and woman should be seen in a much more spiritual aspect. So I don't believe in marriage anymore. Falau bravely spoke publicly about his illness, using his platform to raise awareness about the disease and to remind his fans that despite his illness, he was still committed to his music and to the fight for social justice. Despite his illness, Falau's spirit remained unbroken. He continued to compose music and perform as long as he could, but in the end, it was clear that the disease was taking its toll. On August 2nd, 1997, Felakuti passed away, leaving behind a legacy of music and activism that continues to inspire new generations today. Fela Anukula Kuti, may soul rest in perfect peace, said the secret of this world is to have no The life and legacy of Falakuti, the Nigerian musician who is credited with creating the Afrobeat music genre, continues to be felt around the world and long after his passing. Now, Fela's music, his message of social justice, and his courage in the face of illness have left a lasting impact on those who were fortunate enough to know him or have been impacted by his work. Fela's music continues to be celebrated and enjoyed by fans of all ages worldwide, as his work has an enduring appeal and continues to resonate with new generations. In Lagos, Nigeria, the memory of Fela is kept alive by the New Africa Shrine, a venue where his music is performed and celebrated by generations who never had the opportunity to see him live. Fela's life and legacy are marked by remarkable resilience and a deep commitment to using his platform for the betterment of society. His willingness to speak out against injustice and commitment to his art and his bravery in the face of illness serve as a reminder of the power of one individual to make a difference. Thank you for watching.